I've made some very part-heavy rockets at Kerbal Space Program, some of which you see on screen now. I had one last project in mind though that was going to absolutely shatter my previous records. I want to try landing a Kerbal on Drez using only Separatron rockets. These little guys are usually designed just for pushing away spent stages, and they contain an extremely small amount of solid rocket fuel. Now starting down the vehicle assembly building here, you can see the first thing I did is put down a command pod, and after that I put down a liquid fuel tank. Now this was just just for structure, so I drained out all of the fuel in it, and after I did that, finally it was time to add on those Separatrons. Now these things are very small, and I figured that I could fit 24 of them on the bottom pretty easily here. Now I also wanted to get a bit more thrust, so you can see what I did after that is actually copied a second ring on top of the first one. And once I had this, I wanted to give it a test of the launch pad here. Now starting out, things didn't exactly go super well, and I think what was happening here is that the engines in the bottom were getting burned by the engines on the top. So to hopefully fix that, I moved the engines further up, and I also added on another tank on the bottom so I could add on another set of boosters. Now trying this out, I did get a nice little boost off the launch pad. The problem though was that they ran out of fuel so quickly, and I only was getting up to 3,000 meters. So you can see what I did next here is I started adding in some decouplers to work on staging. After that, I also added on another set of boosters just to the command pod so I'd be able to boost it at the last second. Now trying it out here was pretty good off the launch pad, but now I'm able to drop off that bottom tank and start to boost up the rest of the ship. Now, of course, staging these things seem to help out a lot here, and you can see how the last stage really gives a nice punch at the last second, and I got up to almost a 1,000 meters per second. Now, this wasn't bad at all, but I was only getting up to 30,000 meters. That's still nowhere near where I need to be, so what I did next here is actually got rid of my tanks, and I replaced it with smaller structural fuselages. Now, after I did that, I also added on a structural piece here, and you can see I'm adding on eight spokes on that. Now, I copied that over eight times, and you can see now I'm pulling off this little symmetry trick here, and this lets me get 64 boosters in one ring. Now, I totally stole this trick from another video, I'll link that down in the description, but being able to compact all of these boosters so tightly is going to be a massive help. Now you can see here I placed everything I had with these nice rings, and given this a test here, the game didn't particularly seem to like this change at all. I guess clipping 64 boosters directly into each other isn't a good idea, so I used auto strut here to hold everything together a bit better. After I did that for all these boosters, I gave another test on the launch pad. You can see this almost started to do better right up until the boosters started to burn each other again. This time though, my plan was actually to push the boosters into the center of the tanks rather than further down. This lets me compact things a bit better, and you can see now with the launch pad, I'm getting up to a way higher speed. Now this seemed to be working very well right up until I tried to get rid of the top stage. It ended up flipping over, but eventually corrected itself, so I guess it's okay in the end. And you See now, I'm finally launching off that top stage. This time, it punches way harder than before, and you can see my speed go up crazy fast. Got up to almost 1600 meters per second, and I was going up to 100,000 meters. Now, I had actually tried to do this launch again to see if I could do it any better, but this time I was going so fast, the atmosphere ripped apart my nose cone, and things got out of control very quickly. Now, I really liked the way things were going, but the way that I had these structural tanks was making the rocket so super long. So hopefully compacted a bit better, you can see I got rid of those and are replacing them with engine plates. Now the engine plates are really thin, so you can see I can create a nice stack of 64 Separatrons on it, and then put another one directly below it. And you can see now, after getting a bunch of these together, I started to use a fairing to try to encapsulate the whole thing to keep it from having too much drag. And after wrapping that up here, I also added on some landing legs, and this is so I could do a quick takeoff from Drez. Now I wanted to do this to test out how this stage would do not in an atmosphere, and I really realized that stability is a pretty big problem, and also the rocket was kinda decomposing right into itself. Now one thing that I thought was very funny is as the rocket was spinning, you can see how my trajectory just keeps growing and shrinking with it. Now to give it some extra stability, I added on this reaction wheel, and once I did that, I started to use more engine plates to get some more stages. Now after using my trick again to get 64 of these, I started copying these down. Fortunately most of this I could just keep copying, and I didn't have to redo the trick all that much. On the launch pad here though, I want to give this a test and see how it would do. Funnily enough, it was actually struggling a little bit on the launch pad here, and it could also start to feel some lag. Now I did have some minor staging issues once I got up here, but for the most part, I did see that everything was working, so I wanted to go back to the vehicle assembly building here and try to get some extra power right off the launch pad. To 
do that, you can see here, I added on one of these stacked quad couplers, and once I did that, I separated out these stages to give myself three times the power. And the lag was really starting to set in. This was going to be quite painful, and just launching off the rocket here, you can already see those effects. Now, burning up higher here, I did increase the speed for you guys, but you might notice between the rocket stages, there's quite a delay. For whatever reason, while I was calculating that, it seemed to just take absolutely forever, so every time I tried launching off a stage, it was pretty painful. But you can see, finally now, I'm launching off that fairing and starting on that top stage. This was a great sign, because it was already at 100,000 meters before I even started to think about that top set of stages. Now, of course, there was a few things I wanted to do before I launched this off, and you can see now I added on some fins. I'd also noticed while saving, though, I was already at 2,457 parts, which was a lot more than I was hoping for. Now, I was curious if there was any other type of design I could use to shave off the part count and therefore be able to get myself a lot further. Starting out here, you can see I went for this design sort of with a bunch of legs and I have all these rockets on it. It did have a lot of thrust, but it was super unstable and I didn't really think it was going to be any better. Now, one other idea I had here was going into the space plane hangar and trying to build a plane. Every time I do one of these challenges, people say I should build a plane, so I figured I might as well give it a shot. And I went for probably the most boring plane design here just to try to get a proof of concept down and you can see after finishing up the wings, I added the wheels onto the sides. Once I did that, I added on some basic control surfaces and finally started out on the engines. And given this test on the runway here, it immediately seemed to nosedive because the front is just so heavy. I decided to launch it off anyway though, because why not? That, that was not a good idea. Trying again though, this time I added on a lot more engines at the back and this seemed to balance things out a lot better. This time I was even able to accelerate quite a bit and start to get off the ground. Unfortunately, the direction I started to go was sort of towards all the facilities, which is usually not what you want. So in attempt three here, I added on a bit more controls and finally now I was actually taking off. Now I will say this was working fantastically. I was getting up to a lot of speed right up until I ran out of stages. The thing is, I only got up to about 200 meters per second and just ran out of engines. Unless I'm going to strap on way more, this didn't seem to be any better than just trying to build a normal rocket. This did get me thinking though, because I had realized there's really no reason why I should only use 64 rockets per stage. In fact, here you can see I'm using my little copy trick again, but this time, instead of 64, we're we're going to be using 512 engines on a single stage. This sounded like a good idea because they get a lot more power at once and tried it out in the launch pad here. The game didn't really seem to agree with that philosophy, unfortunately, so we had to go back, turn on auto strut, and give this another try. This time, it was holding together, but the game still is pretty unhappy about it because the amount of drag that was being produced was super limiting me. I only got up to 500 meters per second, and realistically, this just wasn't that much better than using a ton of stages. So at this point, I had finally relented and gone back to the rocket that I was using before. I did have one idea, though, that I thought should make things a lot more efficient. You can see now, I got rid of my quad stages, and I added in the single line of stages again. This was still struggling to get off the launch pad. What I had realized, though, is that these stages were perfectly adequate once I got up high enough. So realistically, if I pull off some of the bottom stages, I should be able to add on a quad coupler here and add on four extra copies. These, of course, are going to help me get off the launch pad and out of the thick parts of the atmosphere and should make things a lot easier. And trying this out in the launch pad, the lag was really starting to add up, but at the very least, it was manageable, and this seemed to be performing significantly better. These bottom stages were enough to really push me up, and once I got through all of those, the single stages seemed to still be performing pretty well. Now starting out here, I used my first set of boosters in that fairing, and everything seemed good at first, at least up until a lot of things started to overheat. Looking at what was going on... I literally didn't change anything, so I, I don't even understand anymore. But trying again, this seemed to be working a lot better here, and you can see here, at the last stage, I only managed to get in orbit, but I fully escaped Kerbin. Now that was awesome, and it meant that I was going to be super close to finally getting all the way to Drez. So to get that last little bit of power that I needed, I added on a few more boosters to the bottom stage, and after I did that, I also added on some fairings here to make things slightly more aerodynamic. And I also snuck a few last boosters in the middle here, and the last thing that I did was I changed the very top stage. You can see here, I'm adding in a decoupler, and I'm adding in just a few of these Separatron engines. I didn't want too many of them, but I did want a few, so I'd be able to adjust my angle and get an encounter with Drez. And with this done, I wanted to go for the 
full flight. The lag at this point was just unbelievable, and if they used any more engines, I honestly think the game was just gonna collapse. Everything seemed to be going pretty well, and I actually started to burn off those bottom stages relatively quickly. Now, the first minor problem that I noticed here is that once I dropped off the very last quad stage, for whatever reason, it kind of was sticking around. I couldn't quite figure out why it was doing this, because it seemed to be fine before, but I was losing a little bit of speed because of it. Now, eventually, it ended up exploding because of the engines above it, so I was sort of okay with it, because I really didn't want to sit through this again. One other problem I I had noticed now though was a little more serious. I noticed the rocket didn't want to do anything but go straight up. That's when I had remembered that I totally forgot to add on batteries. Now this wouldn't have added on enough weight that I think it would have mattered, so what I ended up doing here was turn on infinite electricity. This is not exactly what I had in mind, but again, I did not want to sit through this again, so continuing it on here, everything seemed to be going fine at this point. And now after finally expending all those single engines here, I shot off the fairing and I started to burn sideways ways to get myself out of Kerbin's sphere of influence. But the second set was where problems started to ensue. I noticed this random structural piece that seemed to be slowly drifting away even as I was accelerating. I really don't think the game even understands what's going on anymore. <laughs> After dropping off that stage, it went away, so I guess it's fine. So I just continued on here and tried to get that escape. During the second to last stage, though, that's when things started to go wrong. The rocket started to spin around, and I really didn't have a reason for that. Now, I had to load back a previous save and give this another try. Fortunately, you can see here the lag actually mostly went away since most of the parts are now dropped so far away that they don't even have to register in. Unfortunately though, once I tried looking at the ship a bit closer, these top boosters were kind of vibrating a lot. That was extremely bizarre and launching off the top stage here, I think that was causing this to start to spin out of control. Now it looked like I shot off that decoupler a little early here, so I moved it further up and once I did that, I gave it another test. This time that top stage stage finally ignited correctly, and you can see now, I fully escaped Kerbin, and I was most of the way out to Drez. Now at this point, I warped away from Kerbin, and once I was out of its sphere of influence, I wanted to get all the way out there, so I used the maneuver node and extended myself out. This was technically doable, but I was going to be using almost all of my fuel for this. Now I really don't have any choice though, so you can see now, I'm starting to burn off those stages, and in this flight planner, you can see just how many stages I need to burn for this. Now it had worked out pretty well, that I almost perfectly used all of my stages. I had barely overshot the mark that I wanted, and with this, it was definitely get me on a crash course with Drez. And now, it was just basically a waiting game, trying to get an encounter. Eventually, I did get it here, but I only had two stages left at this point to try to get that encounter. Now, I started to plan it out here, and you can see me moving around the maneuver node and trying to just scrape over the top. For whatever reason, though, this was super expensive where I put it, and it was 57 meters per second of delta V. Now, I'd move the maneuver over a bit, and you can see now it was only going to be 1.5. Now, one small problem is that I actually cannot burn only 1.5 meters per second of fuel. Once I turn on the boosters, they're just going to go, and I'm going to have to burn pretty much exactly 60 or 70 meters per second. This, though, is where a little trick comes in. You'll see now I'm putting the Kerbal on EVA, and once I do that, I'm getting up the back of the rocket. This is kind of cheesy, but I'm going to use the Kerbal to push the rocket up a tiny bit and get that maneuver that I need. Now, as far as I can tell, Kerbal seem to have infinite fuel, and as long as you go back into the command pod, it fully replenishes. But you can see here, after pushing the rocket for a little while, I went back into the orbital view, and I actually did push over my trajectory Wait a bit. This was of course what I was looking for, so I went back into the command pod, refueled, and aimed up to do this again. Now, I had no real idea of how much I should push this for, so I sort of just did it for a little while and looked at this again, and I could see that I was quite a bit closer. So I went ahead now, I went right into the center of those rockets there, and tried to do one last little tap. This time, looking over, I could see that I was just scraping over the surface, and realistically, it wasn't gonna get much better than this. So of course, with all that planned out now, you can see Drez warping up towards me, and I wanted to go for that flyby. With all this finished, I can see here I was going 1,826 meters per second. Now, I don't have that much fuel left anyway, so if I want to try landing on Drez, things are going to get pretty interesting. Now, step two here was going to be to do pretty much exactly the same thing. I actually wanted to do the same maneuver and try to get myself in the same orbital plane as Drez. This was going to make getting a gravity assist quite a bit easier here, and you can see after quite a bit of pushing, I finally got a nice little track right over Drez. So if of course, warped right over it here, and once I did that, I looked at my speed again, but I was somehow going slightly faster. That was a very bad sign, and it had occurred to me at this point, if I wanted to try losing speed, it was probably going to take forever. 
hard. I was kind of curious though, could I just try landing with the two extra boosters I still have and the fuel in the Kerbal's jetpack? So to do this, you see a planned maneuver here to just barely scrape the surface. This should make things as efficient as possible here, and you can see now I'm starting to warp in closer to Drez. Once I got near the Periapsis, I started to burn off those boosters, and with that, I eviated the Kerbal and it started to burn away. This was sort of looking good, but the only problem is that to land, I'm going to need to burn off all 1,700 meters per second to Delta V, and the jetpack has only about 600. So you can see now, I got back in the capsule, and I had a new plan. I had nudged the capsule even closer to the surface, and the new plan was actually going to be to hit into the surface. And I was hoping that a very minor collision would somehow allow me to slow down a lot and actually be able to stop. Now this time you can see I'm way closer to the surface, but I still had missed it only by a few dozen meters. Now I loaded back up a save here, but that's when I noticed my Kerbal was actually stuck inside the boosters and I could not get it out. Now I tried time warping anyway, because I figured it probably wouldn't be that big of a deal, but just doing this actually separated me out and now I was super close to the surface and not in the capsule. This wasn't exactly Exactly what I had in mind, so I tried as hard as I could to get back in there before I slammed into the cliff. Now, unfortunately, I couldn't do it here, but I was super close, so I knew only with one last nudge I should definitely be hitting right into the cliff. And you can see here, finally, I managed to hit into it, and of, of course I died. But at the very least, we were getting a bit closer. Really though, my plan was going to be to EVA the Kerbal and see if somehow the collision would fling them away and actually have them be saved. Now on attempt one here, I really didn't try to do anything specific, and you can see they kind of died the exact same way. On attempt two though, I wanted to try EVAing the Kerbal on top of the capsule and see if that would make any difference. This didn't do anything though, and I still just died. On the next attempt though, I tried spinning up a tiny bit and seeing if that would do anything. Now this looked fairly promising, uh, you know, right up until I died. So on the next attempt here, I tried doing something completely different. This time, I got out of the capsule and tried using my jetpack to get slightly above the cliff. My plan was to barely tap my Kerbal's feet on the surface and see if that would slow it down a lot. On my best attempt here though, I did hit the surface but it still was just too much and I instantly disintegrated. I did, however, find this pretty cool rock and I figured if I landed, I definitely would have to stand on that. Anyway though, I loaded back my save and you can see now my final attempt. This time, I spun up the capsule a lot and this was to try to separate out the engines a lot further and this was gonna give it a larger footprint. This should make it explode a little bit earlier and maybe cause a bit more lag. Now, right before I slammed into the cliff here, you can see I ejected out my Kerbal and then I got a failure screen. At first, I thought this was from the Kerbal dying, but reading the log here, the Kerbal never actually died, the capsule just exploded. This told me that I didn't actually have control of the Kerbal yet, and getting rid of this menu here, I could see a massive fireball, and once it cleared, I zoomed in, and the Kerbal was just there. If I had to guess, what I think happened here is that once I ejected out the Kerbal, I didn't have full control yet, and closing the menu caused the capsule to explode. Now, it took about a frame for me to get full control of the Kerbal, that was just enough time for it to clip all the way through the cliff, and once I did that, I got my control, and it set its speed equal to the capsule speed. Now, of course, the capsule had already exploded, so it was going zero meters per second. So my guess is that that's why I ended up being completely stationary. This is all just my speculation, though, and I really have no idea why any of this happened. But you see here, I managed to get back on my feet and plant the flag. Now, some people are probably gonna say that this is very cheesy, and it is but it worked, so really that's all that matters. <laughs> if you guys like the video, make sure to subscribe. There's definitely a lot more content coming. If you have any other ideas for videos, make sure to leave those down in the comments below as well. <laughs> Otherwise, you can join me visiting this rock in the distance, and I'll see you next time.